Wolf Hollow is, is actually a very old fashioned book in some ways. It is set in the 40s on a small farm. It's seen through the eyes of a 12 year old girl. She has a lot of challenges to face and she rises to the occasion is actually very courageous. Um, but it's a simple story uh, that involves things I think a lot of kids will resonate to, including bullies, including how to try and solve a problem without asking your parents to intervene, including fear and the courage that comes with it, and uh, coming of age, which d doesn't really change whether it's the 40s or now. Uh, kids are very smart and they see things in other children through the ages that they themselves understand well. I was inspired to write Wolf Hollow because my mother grew up on a small farm in Pennsylvania because I spent a lot of time there as I was growing up helping with the harvest and I fell in love with the land and because she told stories about things that had happened to her in her childhood that I found really interesting and very exciting. Um, so I as an adult decided that I would create a fictitious family and put it on that land and see what happened. I never know what's going to happen in a book until it does. I just know my scene and I know one or two characters a little bit and then I set them loose and follow them. And so it was definitely inspired by truth, but it ended up being a work of fiction that blended in a lot of fact. So a, a nice recipe. The character of Toby is, is one I love very much. Uh, he was inspired by a story my mother told about how when she was young, these men, almost entire, always men on their own, would come wandering through the, f the hills of the farmland looking for work or looking for food or shelter. And they were refugees from World War I or the Great Depression. And she was always very affected by these men because she, they made her feel very lucky about her own life and she learned about the wider world from them. So when I set out to create a character, Toby, who was sort of a composite of those people, um, it, he just came to life. And I am forever moved by his story. Um, my characters always just sort of appear, and then I get to know them as we go along. And I really love spending time with Toby. Annabelle is I think the girl I wish I had been brave enough to be. I think I'm Annabelle now, or more like her now than I was then. I was rather shy, I was very afraid of breaking the rules, I was always afraid of offending anyone. And it's not that she's a bad girl, she's a very good girl, and she's uh, very polite, and she minds her manners, but she is extremely strong, and she has a, an unshakable sense of right and wrong. And she is not afraid to stand up for uh, others who are weaker than she is, regardless of how old they are. And she does, despite the trouble that it gets her in. Um, I avoided trouble like the plague when I was a kid. I did not want to bring any stress to my family. She's not secretive, but she does keep her secrets. Uh, I think as much in order to spare her parents as to prove to herself that she is strong enough to solve a problem on her own. To Kill a Mockingbird was is a favorite book of mine. I think all Americans love To Kill a Mockingbird. It was not an influence on Wolf Hollow because the book was so much a tribute to my own family, my own family's history, to my mother, to that way of life, that I literally and sincerely did not notice any parallels between the books until someone pointed out the common tone. Um, some of the story elements were in some ways similar. And I was both very honored by that comparison and very alarmed by it because that book is iconic and it casts a very long shadow and I didn't really want to stand in that shadow but I also didn't want anyone to think that I had set out to in some way rewrite that book. It was not even close to my mind. But I, I am very, very honored when people compare it favorably, just say that, that they are in any way alike because it is such a work of art. I didn't have to do very much research, or I should say I've been doing research for that book my whole life because as a child, when I was on that farm, I was storing up all those experiences, what it feels like to be in a root cellar, what it feels like to wake up in a bedroom so cold there's ice on the windows, what it feels like to help prepare a meal for 20 people, what it feels like to pick strawberries in the hot sun, 
all those things are part of my DNA. So I didn't have to do research on what it is like to live on a family farm. And my mother's stories were primary source material. Uh, I grew up with them as I did with the books that she read to us. And so if I needed an answer to a question, I either looked it up, like when were wolves really eradicated in Western Pennsylvania, or I asked her. Uh, a couple times, what kind of games did kids play, or what kind of radio shows did people listen to in 1943? I always double-checked to make sure I was being accurate. But my mother really was my source for that life and that time and that place. When I wrote Wolf Hollow, I didn't set out to do anything but tell a story and pay tribute. But I absolutely believe that a book that creates empathy in readers has done its job. I believe that art of all kinds is the way that we as human beings learn to communicate with each other through a language we may not necessarily speak. I think children who read books about other people and places in the world get the best education possible. I think they learn to put themselves in the shoes of others to empathize. And yes, it's, books are incredibly important tools in the education of anyone, I believe. Current affairs and social issues, if they influence my writing at all, do so on a subliminal level. I was really surprised, and I shouldn't have been, but I was really surprised when people said, oh, there's so many relevant themes in your book, like bullying, like PTSD. And it literally had not occurred to me to, to think of those things as themes in the book. Um, the bullying is ubiquitous, unfortunately. Always has been, I hope always won't be, but it's everywhere. And so. I didn't think of it as a theme. It's just a fact of life. Uh, PTSD, I didn't think of Toby as a victim of PTSD, even though he clearly is. Because in those days, that's not how they thought of it. They might call it shell shock, but in most cases, they didn't call it anything. So social issues, because they're, they're, we're so aware of them, always creep into everything we think and do and how we react but I can't say it was deliberate in any way to include such things in the book. Librarians have always been critical in my life from the time when I was very young, as far back as I can remember. In some ways, my parents were my librarians when I was a baby. They chose the books, they brought them to me, they made sure that I heard them first and then read them later when I was able to but they always took me to libraries, and every library I ever loved, and there were many, and there are many, had at least one librarian who was so passionate about books that it was infectious. So I would go into the Providence Athenaeum, for instance, or the Ketuit Library on Cape Cod, or any of a number of other libraries, and that person, or people, they would, they would look at me as I came through the door, and their eyes would light up, and they'd say, I've got something special for you or they would just let me spend hours among the books, pulling them off the shelves, sitting on the floor reading them, not worrying if I was making a mess. Their job, as they perceived it, was to inculcate in me a love of literature. And they did, and I am forever grateful. And I can remember their voices to this day, and how the library smelled, and how it felt to hold an old book in my hands, or a brand new one that still creaked when I opened it what a card catalog was like. Those worlds, the worlds of libraries and librarians are special and timeless. And I think libraries are critically, profoundly important as are the people who run them. My advice for young people who want to write their own stories is to write and to write and to write and to read and to read and to read. And to read not to worry about what other people will think of it, not to worry if they're doing it right or wrong, not to worry if it's perfect, because perfection is the death knell of all art, simply to practice the craft, not to worry about being published someday, or who will star in the movie version of your book. And this is advice, of course, I would give to any writer of any age. Write your heart out, and your brain out, and all of you out into the, into the words. Aim for fresh language. Aim for something no one's ever created before, whether it's perfect or not. But read as much as you can. 
good work. Books that live long in my memory are ones whose characters spoke to me, reached out to me, drew me in, with whom I could em empathize, who were layered and complex. I think we don't give children enough credit for their intelligence and their perception. Charlotte's Web was a book that so drew me in because the characters were so compelling. I was in that world. I, I loved spending time there. I wept at the end. I will never forget it. It will always be with me. Uh, Island of the Blue Dolphins was another one. There have been so many that shaped my character, that taught me about life in ways that no one else could, that became beloved treasures of mine. Uh, books that stay in the memory, I think, are ones that are well written because the language itself is, is so memorable and evocative and whose characters and story are just simply unforgettable. There's no way I forget that spider. There's no way I forget that girl on that island with her dog. There's no way, as long as I live. <laughs>